You're watching Good Day Central Illinois on WYZZ. Welcome back. We are back in the kitchen with Olivia De Leon with a fa flavorful salad to yeah. brighten your summer cookouts. We just came out of the 4th of July. Yes. So a lot of people doing stuff still this weekend. This would be a great recipe for oh, that. Oh, definitely. And when I think of the 4th of July, I think about all the food, of course. Yeah. Watermelon being one of those foods. But Certainly. when I make it, I've got lots of leftovers. So this is the perfect way to use up some of those leftovers. Great. So the first thing I think about with watermelon is how do we pick out a good watermelon? You know, they're yeah. not all created equal, sure. right? Yeah. So any, are you familiar with picking out watermelon? Any ideas of what we want to look for? Not really. No, okay. actually. So one of the things, there's, first of all, there's lots of different things out there that are floating around, yeah. but some of the ones that are a little bit more tried and true, the shape. We want to look for something that's very cylindrical, round, uniform in shape. Mm -hmm. We also want to look for something that's very dark in color. A very dull matte skin is what we're looking for. Okay. Next, we want to see this yellow field spot here. This just tells us that, hey, I've had a lot of time to sit in the field, ripen up a little bit before being harvested. And then also we want to look for this, it's called webbing or scarring. This is actually a positive thing. This has to do with the pollination process. And it is said that the more webbing or markings that it has on it, the sweeter it's going to be. Interesting. So lots of cool tips. Some Good people do like a two finger tip where you want the greens to be a certain length. There's oh. so many things out there. The other thing a lot of people struggle with is cutting this, as you guys saw earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one of the things I typically do is cut the ends off, okay. then place it on its side, and then I just go around the edges and take off the rind from there. And this is how I typically end up cutting it into like a cube shape, yeah. like we have here. So we are making a watermelon fennel salad. Interesting. Yes. So we are starting with our watermelon here. Um, they, it is about a three and a half cups seedless watermelon. We okay. don't want to deal with all those right, seeds yeah. in there. And um, to this, we are going to add in a third of a cup of fennel. Now, is that something okay. you've tried before? I've not. And I was talk, I was telling Olivia beforehand. Yeah. I, I don't really. I thought of fennel as like the seasoning. Yes. Which I, we were kind of talking about yeah. is different than this kind of situation. It, it's, that's what it, this comes from. Okay. So that fennel is used in like sausage, yeah. different things like that. This is what it ends up becoming. Okay. So this is the fennel vegetable. It's a bulbous vegetable. It has a couple different parts, which we can consume the whole thing, which is really cool. Interesting. So today we are using the bulb. So I just very thinly slice, slice this with a mandolin. It's oh, about sure. two to three yeah, millimeters thick. And then we have the stock, which can be, is best cooked. And then we also have the fronds here. And this is kind of looks like dill, but it can be used as garnish or a little herb seasoning on top too. And it's kind of cool. It looks like an onion, has different layers. Great. Definitely doesn't taste like an onion though. Yeah. It has more of a black licorice flavor. Okay. A lot of people are scared by that, but I promise you when paired with the right things and uh, prepared properly, it's, it's very good. Awesome, so we got yeah. about a minute left. Okay. So let's see how let's we do this Let's throw this, this together. So, so yeah, let's add so the let's fennel. Add Again, we're using about a third of a cup. Okay. Great. Perfect. Perfect. And then you can add in our walnuts. We're using a fourth of a cup of unsalted chopped walnuts. Great. And those, of course, heart healthy, good for us. And sure. then we have another fourth of a cup of crumbled goat cheese. Okay. Perfect. And I like to get it in the crumbled form, just cuts back on the prep process. Right. Yeah, easy then. And then we have salt. That is about a fourth of a teaspoon. Okay. And some lemon juice, about a tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Great. And lastly, we have some fresh thyme leaves, and that's nice. about a teaspoon. It's really colorful. Yes, definitely. It's great on a on a party table that's if you're serving right. it that way, and then just stir. I yep, assume. you can stir it up. Sometimes I just make it just as just like that on a platter, and just not stir it and just leave it as is. But it's got lots of good That's scents and it smells Yeah, so I was going to say, it smells, re it's really aromatic, so I'm sure definitely. it's a really fresh tasting thing. And that's, that, it's such an interesting thing to do with watermelon. Oh, definitely. Awesome. Well, yeah. sure, a lot of people are trying that for their 4th of July this weekend yes. at parties. Olivia, thanks so much of this course. morning. Of course, thanks for having so me. So if you'd like the details on this recipe, we will put it up on our website, ciproud.com.